Hello, all of you. Uh, I'm Professor Kanchan K. Malle. I am a professor of communication and a faculty fellow with the UNESCO Chair on Community Media at the University of Hyderabad uh, in Hyderabad, Telangana. Uh, so um, I thank Jayant and his team for inviting me for this faculty development program. Uh, the topic that they wanted me to speak on is community radio in India. And I'll try to keep it simple and an introductory kind of uh, a lecture and deal with uh, concept and practice. So before starting the lecture, let me just share the screen with you. I hope uh, this is visible. So as I said, the topic that I thought I will uh, talk to you about today is uh, community radio and I'll talk about it from the perspective of India and give you an idea about the concept and practice just in case if you've not heard about uh, you know community radio before this. So uh, let me give you a few names uh, that uh, you know and let's see if you have heard these names before. So Vakt Ki Awaz, uh, Madhuban, uh, Chanderi Ki Awaz, uh, Radio Brahmaputra, uh, Janwani, Gunjan, Alfaze Mewad, Radio Mewad, uh, Radio Swaraj, Gurgaon Ki Awaz, Lalit Lokwani, uh, Kadal Osai, all of these names, I am not sure you have heard these before. Uh, these are names of community radio stations that are there in India. Not sure again if you have tuned into any of these, uh, because I'm sure when you drive to your uh, uh, department or to your office and you have the radio on in your car uh, or otherwise when you tune into radio it's usually the commercial channels like Radio City, Fever FM, Big FM, 93.4 uh, radio, uh, 98.3 radio Mirchi and all I've put them in the bottom of the slide. So these are the kinds of names that you're familiar with not not the ones that I had said before. So uh, I'm uh, not sure if any of you have before this, uh, you know, associ been associated in some way with community radio or not. Uh, taking that as the background, let me start by uh, introducing to you the concept of community radio. So the historical philosophy of community radio is to use it as the medium, uh, to use this medium as the voice of the unheard or the people who don't have a platform to speak, right? It is the mouthpiece of people who are marginalized. When we say marginalized, it can be on the basis of caste, gender, class, or ground, or any other ground. Uh, and it is generally, uh, in India specifically, community radio is generally associated with uh, the, the whole social change or development process. Right. I'll explain as we go on. But the main thing that one has to remember about community radio, especially as a tool for development, is that it is not about doing something for the community, but about the community doing something for itself. So it's about ownership, access, uh, and uh, you know control of the means of communication. So it is the ordinary people who would have access to uh, you know, doing radio for themselves. So that is the spirit that we have to keep in mind when we talk about community radio. The definition uh, that I just gave you it comes from uh, what is called EMA. EMA is the French acronym for World Association of Community Radio Broadcasters. So since it's a world uh, association, uh, you would be able to understand that community radio is not just uh, uh, an Indian phenomenon or a South Asian phenomenon or just found in countries which are developing countries. It's across the world. Uh, community radio is found across the world. It's in the US, it's in Canada, it's in Australia, uh, it's in the UK. Uh, so um, a lot of democratic liberal countries would have a community radio sector. Right? Uh, now, how do you differentiate community radio sector in the larger media scape or larger broadcasting, uh, you know, in, in the country. So uh, it is usually looked upon as the 
third tier of broadcasting. And what do we mean by third uh, tier of broadcasting is that uh, you will usually find three types of broadcasting in most countries. One would, of course, be public, which is owned by the state. By state, we mean the government. And uh, this is like the All India Radio, right? So that is the public uh, radio that you, uh, pu public uh, uh, broadcasting that you have, right? Um, the second, of course, is uh, commercial. I gave you some names like Big FM, Fever, uh, uh, Fever FM, and so on. So this is more mostly the uh, sector which is for entertainment and for commercial use of uh, frequencies, right? Uh, community radio comes as the third uh, sector of broadcasting in any country, and it is usually identified with one is not for profit, right? So it is a sector outside of the government and the commercial sector. So uh, when we say not for profit, it doesn't mean for loss, right? And then there is community ownership, which is the most important thing that characterizes community radio. Um, uh, and when we say ownership, it doesn't just mean that the license is name, it cannot be in the name of the community, right? So uh, license is usually in the name of a non-governmental organization. So uh, linked to this, the important characteristic of community radio is community participation. And as you will see, you know, as I go through my slides, community participation is the thing which will be uh, uh, coming up as the most important thing as far as community radio is concerned. So let me... Um, give you this uh, definition, which looks like there's a lot of text there, but let me break it down for you. And as I break it down, you'll, uh, you know, easily be able to understand the different characteristics of community radio, right? And how uh, you'll get an idea how we differentiate it from other kinds of radio. So when radio fosters the participation of the citizens and defends their interests, uh, when it reflects the tastes of the majority. And when we say majority here, what we are trying to emphasize is that uh, the other media is in the hands of a few people. The, uh, you know, the rest of the people, the ordinary citizens, which are, who are the majority, uh, their voices don't usually get heard on media. So this uh, particular uh, uh, medium reflects the tastes of this larger, uh, you know, majority. And of course, uh, the different the, this, this majority, of course, has diversity within it, which is um, also important, right? When it truly informs, uh, uh, when it helps resolve thousand and one problems of daily life. So it is not just about entertainment or about, um, you know, uh, uh, propaganda. It is about looking at day-to-day -day problems of life, right? And then when all ideas are debated, uh, in its programs, and all opinions are respected. So uh, uh, there is no idea which is not which cannot be discussed, right? So there is no one uh, uh, you know one way of uh, talking that we have there. Uh, different ideas are uh, and opinions are respected, right? So cultural diversity. Uh, is stimulated over commercial homogeneity. This will become more clear, but suffice it to say now that uh, community radio is a, a very big cultural resource for any community. When women are the main players, they are not just there for glamour. They are there because their opinion and their intellect also matters, right? Uh, then uh, when no type of dictatorship is tolerated. So there is editorial independence and when everyone's word fly without discrimination or censorship that is community radio so one feeling that you will get out of this definition is that it is a very democratic medium we call community radio as the basis for media democracy right so uh, you must be wondering why we are talking about radio when now you have social media, when you have television, when you have such advanced technology, right? So we talk about radio because it is an affordable medium in terms of production, management, as well as reception. So you can receive your 
radio on uh, even the mobile phone right it can reach communities at the end of the development road so places where there's no electricity also you can tune into radio right so it reaches uh, as they say the last mile uh, or the very end of the development road so the penetration is quite high as far as uh, radio is concerned and uh, it is able to reach people who uh, cannot read or write also and it is appropriate for cultures dominated by orality uh, by this we mean that you know we, in india you are familiar that you know things and knowledge are passed on uh, from gen, uh, from generation to generation through the word of mouth so where people are into you know uh, an oral culture radio is a very familiar medium for them and then there is widespread ownership and familiarity as far as radio is concerned you will find in rural areas uh, people carrying radio on their cycles you will find radio in the kitchens of uh, where you know they give company to women so it's basically a medium uh, you know which is accessible to the ordinary people uh, uh, production of uh, radio is not rocket science anybody can learn it so that is why radio is a preferred medium when we talk about access when we talk about development when we talk about uh, local culture right uh, so uh, yeah why the need for community radio basically right so uh, uh, we usually when we talk about community radio we link it to the whole idea of media globalization and what is media globalization it is basically you know the uh, uh, the advancement of technologies has brought uh, they say that uh, they they they've brought the world together right and um, uh, as far as um, uh, media is concerned also it has become global in nature right uh, uh, it is uh, able to take advantage of the advanced technologies right uh, so what we say here is that um, advanced technologies in media somehow because they are expensive because they are advanced they are catering mainly to people who have power who have money who have uh, you know uh, political clout so what uh, what is um, media globalization doing is it is um, uh, it is infringing diversity of information in the sense that very few people have access to media and whatever they say is heard by all but whatever everybody else says may not be heard by them. right so uh, it has become a medium which is uh, not fulfilling the fundamental right of the affordable access to media therefore the need for an alternative media that will revive uh, uh, civil society what do we mean by revive civil society civil society is the uh, sector which is outside of government and the Uh, uh, and the commercial sector so um, uh, it is uh, the sector where which uh, keeps a watch on the activities let us say of the government of how it affects common people uh, then it keeps an eye also on the uh, you know on what industry is doing or whether their policies are pro people or not so civil society is uh, 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 that group Uh, which is outside of this uh, to to uh, the state and the market as we say so in civil civil society will be able to take decision about uh, with or or have an opinion about the policies or about what is happening only if there is right information in the public domain right if only few people own the media then there will be only limited information in the public domain information which they uh, the people who have media think they should uh, uh, you know provide to people right so it may not be the entire truth uh, so in order to uh, be able to take good decisions the civil society needs information from diverse sources and therefore media should be in the hands of a lot of other people who don't get get a chance to talk on big media right so that's how we say uh, alternative media is re required for uh, civil society to be able to understand what the uh, government or industrial policies 
uh, what implication the government and industrial policies have for them. So usually putting this whole thing, uh, you know, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a framework, uh, usually we understand community radio from three points of view. One is globalization, which I try uh, explained just now. Uh, then the other is development and the third is civil society. So I've touched upon these, but let me explain these to you more in the context of India, right? So what happened in India when there was advancement of technology, when there was globalization, there was satellite revolution, there was boom of ICTs. ICTs is information and communication technology. All this because of uh, media advancement in technologies or media globalization. Same time, there was also what is called the privatization of media industries. Um, we call this the LPG era. LPG doesn't mean your cooking gas. It means liberalization, privatization, and globalization era. So in that uh, era, there was deregulation of control by the government, right? Which means big companies were able to own media. So people who had a lot of money and power, they are the ones who started controlling the media when it was deregulated by the government. What, what did it lead to? It led to uh, what we call the, uh, if, if not monopoly, the oligopoly or oligopolistic control over the terms of public debate. So basically trying to say that um, only a few organizations will have control of media and their uh, opinion or their uh, the information they want to give is what will be there in the public um, in, in the public sphere, right? So what has happened because of that? There is multiplication of media outlets. So if you look at the channels that you have, you might you have hundred uh, about eight hundred channels, uh, television channels, and so many newspapers. You have um, uh, information flowing, uh, the, uh, you know, all across all, all all around you, but. Uh, if you try to uh, look at all those media, just browse through those media, you will see that there are many uh, channels, but it is the same kind of information that you will find in all those channels. So uh, there is what we call the diminishing plurality of information, same sources, same kind of formats, same kind of uh, talking heads. So, uh, or uh, sometimes, you know, if you go, go from one news channel, channel to the other, you will find even the experts are the same. So there may be multiple channels, but people will not experiment. They will only give you, uh, uh, you know, what is of interest to you. In the sense, no, uh, it, it may not be in your interest, but it is of interest to you. So what actually happens is, that um, uh, you, they are looking for basically TRPs and eyeballs, right? So whatever uh, attracts audiences is given to them, right? So a need is there to have alternative media for bringing about diversity and to revive the development process of media. Why are we saying development process? Provis? This means this is the second entry point for understanding community media. So what happened? Uh, and again, I'm talking in the context of India. Uh, Post-World War II, there was, uh, you know, a lot of nations got independence. And uh, this is the period where uh, all uh, nations that had got their independence started this exercise of nation building. So they were moving towards modernization, right? So mass media were used for information de de uh, dissemination. Uh, we have the theory of diffusion of innovations, where it means if you give people information, they will move from being traditional societies to modern societies. This is called the dominant paradigm of development, where government delivers development to people. It is top down, right? It is very prescriptive. It is very pedagogical. So, you know, uh, if, if you don't go with what uh, is being, uh, you know, prescribed to you, they say you are a laggard, you're, st you know, uh, staying uh, behind. So it is this kind of um, uh, development which was there. In top-down dominant paradigm, there is very little stakeholder involvement 
in the process of development, right? So the buy-in from the community sometimes is not voluntary. And in that case, this, is, this did not turn out to be a sustainable form of government. We are not saying it is wrong. You had green revolution, you had inter, industrialization, but uh, the effects of those uh, um, did not trickle down to the lowest denomin uh, common denominator, right? So it did not go down to the people at the grassroots. Now for that, there was a paradigmatic shift in um, uh, development paradigm. And what we have now is called participatory communication. And this was started through new social movements, non-governmental organizations coming into the uh, coming as actors in the development process and here if you are using media it has to be a media which in enhances in some way the participation of the people in the process of development right so community media kind of um, or community radio kind of media is needed in order to garner the support and participation of the people in the development process, right? So this is the second way uh, in which we understand community radio. So what community radio enhances is a participatory approach to communication for development. And what is a participatory approach? Uh, these uh, characteristics that I am telling you are also associated with how community radio works. So it is usually people-centric, it will be location specific. It builds on the local knowledge of the people, right? So it focuses on empowerment and self-reliance. So uh, the processes are uh, non-linear. So it is not top down, bottom up. There is horizontal communication. And a lot of the communication for social change uh, strategies or uh, initiatives that are associated with participatory approaches and in which community radio can help, uh, you know, are they come out of participatory research where stakeholders are a part in making decisions, right? So this whole process is about, you know, using media for development and not to be used by media basically, right? So that is the spirit behind participatory approaches to the, uh, the word there is C for D, which essentially means commu uh, communication for development. These days we say communication for social change, right? So uh, as I was trying to explain, participatory communication for social change has processes which allow people to speak for and about themselves and their issues. It enables individuals, organizations, communities to learn to use media rather than be used by them. It's a process of public and private dialogue through which people define uh, their identities, right? It leads to collective problem identification, decision-making, and a community-based, community-driven implementation of solutions to development issues where the people are a part in the decision process, right? So to let me bring it all together in the context of what is community radio and how is it linked to this, right? So uh, another thing I'd like to say, the third um, dimension, which I was talking about public sphere and civil society, when people are involved, the civil society is uh, becomes more active because the public sphere has uh, information and ideas and opinions of people from all around. So what happens is community media becomes the medium of the civil society, medium of the social movement, and it is a medium in the community, for the community, about the community, and by the community. What it does is, uh, does is it provides rights of access to media uh, uh, to minorities and marginalized groups, people who otherwise may not be heard. Uh, it promotes, these can be people who have no background in media also, but they can come and participate in community media. It promotes and protects cultural and linguistic diversity. 
usually it serves a recognizable community the community itself is a contested um, concept and uh, if there is time uh, you know later sometime uh, you know uh, i can uh, uh, explain how community itself also has uh, can be looked at differently right so it also promotes access to training as a step towards media democracy or democratization right so ordinary people are trained in media making right so it is motivated by community well being and not commerce it is usually also volunteer driven and managed and owned by community members it should be editorially independent of of government commercial religious institutions and policy and political parties even in the community radio policy they talk about not having the engagement of um uh, of political uh, part uh, you know polit uh, not not having content re related to politics again uh, there are people who argue that all development issues are also political issues so that is another debate that one can have right moving on let me tell you the scenario in india how did community radio come to india so it all started with a supreme court judgment of 1995 by justice p b savant who said airwaves are public property and must be utilized for advancing public good now how is this significant because till about this time broadcasting in india although we had liberalization broadcasting in india was owned only by the government we did not have commercial channels also it is after this um, uh, this, uh, this uh, judgment Uh, this is a landmark judgment after which the uh, government decided to open up the broadcasting sector right and it uh, invited um, uh, the uh, the commercial sector uh, it it was uh, um, giving license to commercial sector to set up community radio uh, radio stations there was what is called the auctioning of the frequencies that commercial se sector could purchase so this was the first time that um, the monopoly let us say of the government on broadcasting was broken however uh, the, this was only given to commercial sector so civil society organization non governmental organizations development sector said please uh, also give the uh, the radio waves to the civil society right so there was advocacy efforts which were Uh, asking the government to also uh, open up this sector for the non-governmental uh, organizations, right? Uh, so what happened is you have uh, this is uh, basically the uh, you know timeline of how it happened. So Supreme Court judgment followed by a Bangalore declaration that asked government to open up the airwaves. for uh, the uh, community media sector or the non governmental sector then there was what is called the pastapur initiative where again um, uh, there was uh, a petition which had gone to the government saying uh, the opening of the airwaves should reach its uh, logical conclusion by the sector getting opened also for the civil society so then we had what is what are what were called community radio guidelines but they were only meant for educational recognized educational institutions in india that was the uh, uh, that was in 2003 they they were called community uh, radio uh, po policy for community radio but it was only for campuses uh, so the lobbying went on right and to cut the whole story short uh, it was in november 2006 that the cabinet gave approval for expanding the policy and including non governmental organizations from the entire country to apply for community radio right so uh, you we must know that uh, even uh, before the 2006 policy came up a uh, lot of development and uh, organizations and media advocates had started experimenting with community radio so uh, there was deccan development society which had a community radio uh, of its own there was 
alternative media AIT for uh, you know alternative media for uh, uh, alternative for India development AIT, Kach Mahila Vikas Sangathan. There was an organization called Voices. What were they doing? They were making radio in a community radio format. And how does that happen? As I told you in the beginning, through the participation of the community, right? Uh, so it was the radio programs that they were making had all these characteristics that I uh, told you earlier, right? That it was community based, it was on local issues, it was made with community participation, and so on. But they did not have the license to broadcast. So what were they doing? They were narrow casting. They would make cassettes and take it uh, to different villages and play them back and people would give feedback. At that time, they would also record programs from the people in the rural areas. Now, there were organizations which were also using a small slot on the All India Radio in order to uh, uh, air their programs. Right uh, now, Kach Mahila Vikas Sangathan program. Uh, it's called Kunjal Panje Kach Ji. That is one of their programs based again on local stories, uh, you know, and uh, local issues. Uh, so that and and it was also a program for women empowerment that actually won an award also, Chameli Devi Award. Now all this was happening, but they were not able to broadcast. So how did all these experiments or initiatives help? So when there was advocacy going on for a community radio policy, all these stations became the experimental stations, which showed how useful community radio could be, right? So they were very much a part of lobbying for community radio and how it can be, they, they proved that community radio could be used for stakeholder involvement in the development processes, right? So just a, a little bit of idea about the community radio policy in India. So um, who can apply for the license? Educational institutions and any non-governmental organization which has at least three years of track record of working with the communities, right? Then uh, the power allowed is 50 watts uh, transmitter. So that usually has, I think, an uh, ERP of 100 watts uh, or something, and it covers around 15 kilometers radius. Right? Uh, the um, uh, the uh, you know interesting thing about CR policy is even today uh, that neither the commercial sector nor community radio can broadcast news. However, they can give information and not call it news. Right? And there can be no content of political nature. So one has to go through the policy in order to know, uh, you know, that in, in India, because the whole, uh, uh, you know, struggle for community radio started for reviving the development prowess of community radio, it has somehow got associated only for use for development, right? So uh, uh, there is still, uh, uh, you know, uh, efforts that are on to get um, uh, government to allow news on community radio. What is community radio doing now these days, uh, you know, uh, from 2006, the first community radio in the rural area came about in 2008. That was called Sangam Radio, right? And after that, there was Radio Bundelkhand in the same year. And uh, uh, there are now about 300 community radio stations plus 300 plus community radio stations. I'm including educational radio in this also. Uh, educational means campus community radio stations, right? So about 300 of them. And uh, in the rural areas, especially and uh, uh, community radios that are in remote areas, they are uh, again, as I had said earlier, a kind of a cultural resource. So they are enhancing what is called the vernacular creativity among uh, of, of uh, the people there, right? So, uh, or, or they're kind of recognizing the existing vernacular creativity. So local talent, vanishing folklore, forgotten folk songs, uh, disappearing on new music, uh, then dying sports, then uh, uh, any unfamiliar, uh, they are not always making uh, programs in a particular radio format. 
they will bring in innovative radio formats which are uh, uh, derived from the local culture to have uh, to make programs so it is not just doing development it is also pro promoting the cultural uh, uh, identity of the community in which the community radio is and we always as i had said in the beginning also associate community radio uh, we, the the famous uh, you know quote about community radio is that it is 10% about radio making and 90% about the community so what happens in community radio is that the learning uh, so it's not top down information giving the learning happens by community getting involved in the process of program making through program making they will come to understand a lot of information that they can use right so as i was saying just to give you an idea about community radio in south asia india around 300 bangladesh the policy came in 2008 it was revised in 2018 and it has about uh, 18 community radio stations as of now a lot of these radio stations like some of the radio stations in india also are for disaster management. And they have proved very useful during cyclones. And uh, in, in Nepal, uh, uh, the radio stations uh, proved very useful during earthquake, right? So because uh, the, the community radio has community connect. So uh, the information that it is able to pass on to the community helps in disaster mitigation as well as disaster management, right? Nepal, Nepal doesn't have a community radio policy, but it had the first community radio in South Asia. It was called Radio Sagar Mata, right? And right now it has 300 community radio stations. I'm quickly giving you this uh, uh, slide just to give you an idea. And uh, again, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share this slide with the organizers of the FDP with Jan. Uh, and uh, let him pass this on to you. Uh, this is a step-by-step -step guide for setting up of a community radio station. And it also guides you. Uh, I've given the link and you can actually go to the uh, video also. Uh, it guides you how to set up a community radio stations. And many of you who are from educational institutions, uh, this also gives you a, the process that you can set up community radio stations in your own, um, uh, you know, university or college or any other educational institution that you come from. So this is basically for that on the steps that are involved in setting up community radio stations in India. So I'm almost coming uh, to an end, but before I do that, I must, uh, you know, I, I, we, we've said that community radio is used for development and it takes on a whole lot of campaigns. It takes up a whole lot of issues, but um, uh, I, I tend to, uh, you know, be connected a lot with community radio in its uh, efforts uh, that are directed towards women empowerment. So just to give you a brief idea about that, uh, there are many community radio stations in India which are only run by women. It is not that they don't have the support of men, right? But they are women-only community radio stations. We have said that community radio stations are meant to cater to people who do not have, uh, you know, uh, access to uh, media otherwise. So the more marginalized groups. So uh, uh, that is why women are among the marginalized groups. Uh, the Sangam radio that I talked to you about is actually run only by women, women who are Dalit women, rural women, many of them are not educated, right? So there is triple marginalization of uh, sorts, marginalization on the basis of gender, caste, even class and education also, right? So it has been seen that informed by a gender perspective, community radio can facilitate a reversal of this marginalization because it is a space it's a discursive space where women can come and talk about their issues uh, you know they can participate in civic and public life uh, uh, they it uh, it is also a medium where information that women can use is articulated right and then 
uh, it stimulates women's engagement in development. So, uh, as I said earlier, community radio is about bringing people into the fold of uh, of um, uh, of a, of uh, development. In the sense, they should participate in the whole process of development, and the development decision making happens from their perspectives. And when we say their women are an important part of that, so it helps women. Uh, you know, in amplifying women's choices and what we say is that it brings women together and their solidarity also is forged, right? And they can plan collective action. So it becomes a platform for women to come together and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, then take action on issues that concern them, right? So um, a lot of stations uh, uh, are are... In fact, all community radio stations work on gender, but many of them have taken a Mandeshi Tarang, for example, Gurgaon Ki Awaz, Rudino Radio. All of the Rudino Radio is in Gujarat. Mandeshi Tarang is in Maharashtra. Gurgaon Ki Awaz in Haryana. So the, uh, Radio Mewat or Alfaze Mewat in Haryana uh, again. So all of these stations are doing a lot of work related to women empowerment. Right, Tilonia Radio in Rajasthan. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, wrap this whole uh, presentation by just um, uh, you know talking about the role community radio has played during COVID nineteen. Right, uh, even the government of India has recognized now that the community radios have played a very important role as far as COVID nineteen is concerned. They have said that this was their connect to the communities, the last mile connectivity also to the communities. They were able to connect to communities in a manner which was which helped in the fight against COVID-19, right? One of the things that really helped to connect with people was uh, the fact that all the programming on community radio is meant to be in local language, right? So it not only, community radio not only revives, uh, you know, local language, but it also revives local dialects. So the programming that is made there is always in, a, in the language of the people. It is in conversational language of the people, which they can understand. Another way that they helped was, you know, all these big terms that we use uh, during COVID-19, like social distancing, quarantine, uh, you know, uh, then uh, uh, there was uh, quarantine was in fact, some people were thinking that it is like going to the jail. So many and uh, the masks, right, the N95 mask, all of these, uh, the community radio stations um, made the people understand that in the local language, right? So they, uh, and a lot of information related to COVID-19 was given to people in their local dialect, in their rural style, right? They use folk songs, they use uh, folk uh, radio drama in order to be giving all this information. Community radio stations did a lot of offline work also with the communities because they have a community connect. Uh, then during uh, COVID-19, they were also doing counseling because domestic violence had increased a lot. So all of those activities were being done by uh, community radio and there were reporters who were working from home. They could not come to the uh, station because of the restrictions. Still, they were in some way or the other getting associated with local uh, uh, organizations that were working in their communities in order to help people. This was going on across the world in South Asia and in India also. Again, during COVID-19, uh, they tried to reach out uh, through various initiatives like having school on radio, right? Uh, 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 to uh, uh, people who were beyond, who are, who, are, who are beyond the digital divide, who may not have access to smartphones, who may not have access to internet. So they were trying to reach out. Many of the stations were trying to reach out. I have put the pictures of Radio Madhuban in Rajasthan who have gone and, uh, 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 and uh, had schools and classes even on radio for people who did not have access to internet, 
right so all these efforts were going on and uh, this all made um, government to recognize the fact that community radio is an important sector as far as uh, 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 important broadcasting sector in the country so i'll stop with that and uh, i hope that some of what i have said was useful to you i have tried to bring in inf little little information about the uh, you know work that we have done over 20 years so it i couldn't go into details of everything but whatever could be put together in this presentation i have tried to bring it for you hope you liked it thank you very much